this video, I'm going to show you how to create this blog article card from scratch. I'll show you how I use the Figma design to define the HTML structure and how I applied all of the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, first I'm going to go over the Figma design. And then using that design, I'm going to create the HTML structure for the page. And then I'm going to apply all of the styling with CSS. So to begin, here is the Figma design. I have three cards designed on this page. Each card will link to a different blog article, but they all follow the same structure. If we zoom into the design a little bit more, you can see that there's a banner image at the top with a tag that indicates what kind of category this blog article is in. And beneath that, I have content about the actual blog article. So I have hashtags related to the article, the title of it, a little description about it, and then some information about the writer. So to help me develop this design, I created this group called Guides. And this group contains different areas that are blocked off to help indicate what kind of containers I'm putting the code in so it's more organized. So these guides are going to help me define the HTML structure for each card. So under the guides, first I just have the card container. So if I turn that on, you can see that I put this entire element in a group called card. So that will be the first div that will hold everything. Then beneath that, I have a card banner, and this is essentially this image area and this tag. Since these two elements overlap, I want them to be in the same group. And then beneath that, I'm going to have the body. And the body will include all of the text and profile information about the writer. Then beneath that, I'm going to have the profile section. So because I want the profile area to behave differently than the rest of this text, I'd rather have this in its own separate div. And beneath that, I have the profile info div, which just contains the person's name and how many followers that they have. I just want to place this in a separate div so it's more organized. So following these guides exactly, I'm going to recreate this with HTML. So jumping into the code pen, first I have a link to a font family that I'm going to use for the project. And then beneath that, I have the body tags. And within the body, I have a few images that I want to use throughout this project. Then in the CSS, I have several root variables that I already declared and then some universal styling. So first I'm going to define the HTML structure, then I'll put in realistic content, and then finally I'll add all of the styling with CSS. So to get started, first I want to wrap all of the cards in an element so that way they're all in one group. So in my code pen, I'm going to make a div class of wrapper, and this is going to hold all of the cards. Then I'm going to start on the structure of each card. So again, in my Figma project, I define this area as card, and that will be the container that will hold the entire card. So going back in my HTML, I'm going to create a div class of card. The next element I'm going to make is this card banner, which again, will hold this image and this tag. So back in here, I'm going to create a card banner container. The next element I'm going to make is card body, which will hold all of the text in the document. Beneath that, I'm going to create a card profile, which will hold all of the profile information. And within the card profile, I'm going to have card profile info, which will just be the person's name and the number of followers that they have. So in this card profile, I'm going to create another div called card profile info. So this is really the underlying structure of the HTML. And now I'm going to go back and actually fill it in with content. So we have this card element already defined, but for this particular banner area, I need an image and a tag. So I'm going to create that in the card banner area. So first I'm going to create a paragraph and it will have a class of category tag. Now I also want there to be several types of categories on the page. So I'm also going to add another class that references the type of tag it is. So this one will be popular. So I'm going to add a popular class as well. And still within that card banner container, I'm going to add the image that will be the banner image. 
So I'm going to take a banner image that I already found and I'm going to place that where I want it to be. And for this one, I'm going to give it a class of banner image. Then I'm going to work on the actual body of the card. So going back into the design, for the card body, first I have some hashtags related to the actual article, the title of it, a description, and then profile information about the writer. So going back in here, I'm going to create another paragraph tag with a class of blog hashtag. I'm going to create a h2 element with a class of blog title. And I'm going to create another paragraph with a class of blog description. So I just realized I made a little mistake. I actually want the card profile and the card profile info to be under the card body container. So I'm just going to move that into place. And for that card profile, first I actually want it to be the image. And then I actually want the card profile info to be in a separate container with just the person's name and the number of followers that they have. First, I'm going to grab an image that I want to use for a person's profile. And then under the card profile info, I'm going to put an H3 with a class of profile name and then a paragraph tag with a class of profile followers. For this image, I'm also going to add a class here of profile image. So that's really it. That's the basic HTML structure. And now I'm going to go back and add in realistic content. So there we go. That's information for one card. So now I'm going to repeat it to make the second and third card in the design. Now all of the HTML structure is completely defined and I have the page filled up with realistic content. Now all we have to do is quite a bit of styling to get it to look like this. So first I'm going to apply styling for the external elements and then I'm going to move inward. So first I'm going to apply styling for the actual card, then for the banner area, and then for the body. So jumping back into CodePen, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So in my CSS, first I'm going to declare the body tag and within the body, I'm going to set the margin to two REM. So that way there's a little bit of breathing room on the page. Then I'm going to set the color of the text to a dark gray color that I already defined. And then I'm going to work on the card element. First, I'm going to declare that class of card, which again holds all of the elements on the page. So for this card element, first I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. I'm going to add a box shadow around it. I'm going to set the background color of it to white. I'm going to add a border radius. I'm going to set the position of this to relative. And that's because I want certain elements in the card to have a position of absolute. And so it's best to set the parent element to relative. I also want this to have a fixed width, so I'm going to make it 350 pixels. I'm going to set the margin of this to 1 REM. So there we go. Now we can actually see one container and then the next container and then the third container on the page. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on this banner image. So again, in the design, I have this banner image and then I have this tag that I'm going to place on top of it. So using this as a guide, I'm going to reference that banner image. I'm going to set the position of this element to absolute. I'm going to set the object fit to cover. I'm going to set the height to a specific value. So I'm going to set it to 14 REM. And I want the width to be 100%. So now we can see the banner image at the top of the card. So next, I'm going to work on this category tag, which is placed on top of this image. So I'm going to reference the class of category tag. For this category tag, I want the font size to be a little smaller, so I'm going to 0.8 REM. I'm going to make the font weight of this bold. I'm going to set the color of this element to white, 
Now I am going to modify the background color for each tag, but initially I'll just set the background color to red so that way we can actually see something on the page. So you can see it right there. And then I'm going to set the padding of this element to 0.5 REM, 1.3 REM, 0.5 REM, and then 1 REM. I'm going to set the text transformation to uppercase. So now all the letters are capitalized. I'm going to set the position of this element to absolute. I'm going to set the Z index to one. So now it's on top of the image. I'm going to set the top position to one REM, which will push it down a little bit. And then in the design, I have these two corners as sharp, these two as rounded. So I'm going to get that effect by applying a particular border radius. So now we can actually see that curve on the page. And then to apply different styling for each of the filters in the HTML, I also placed a class according to what kind of category it was in. So for popular, I put popular and for technology, I put technology. So I'm going to reference these classes here and then apply the particular styling to it. So now the popular tag has one color, technology has another color, and psychology has a different color. Next, I'm going to work on the card body. So again, first I have that hashtag, then I have the title, description, and then profile information. So I'm going to reference that card body and I'm going to add a particular margin. So first I'm going to add 15 to the top and then one around the other sides. So now we can actually see the text on the page and it's because the banner image and the tag had different position properties. Those were set to absolute. So this text was actually placed underneath these images and so we couldn't see it. So I need all of the card body elements to be pushed down enough so that way we can definitely see it in the card. Next, I'm going to work on the actual hashtags. So first I'm going to reference the blog hashtag and I want to reduce the size of this a little bit. So I'm going to set the font size to 0.9 REM. I'm going to bump up the weight of it a little bit. So I'm going to set the font weight to 500, which is a little heavier than regular. And then I'm going to set the color of this to a variable I already defined as color link. So now this is coming together really well. Next, I'm going to work on this title and this description. So I'm going to reference the blog title and I'm going to set the line height to this to a particular value. I feel like there's a little bit of a gap between each line and I want to reduce it slightly. So I'm going to set the line height to 1.5 REM, which makes it a little bit closer. And then I definitely need to improve on the spacing between the elements. These elements are a little too close to one another. So I'm going to add a margin, one REM, then zero, and then 0.5 REM. So now I have a bit of spacing on the top and beneath it. Next, I'm going to apply styling for the actual description. So I'm going to reference that blog description. And for this blog description, I'm going to set the color of it to a slightly different color. So it's a little bit more subdued on the page. So I'm going to set the color of this to a medium color. And I also want to reduce the font size of this as well. So I'm going to reference the font size and set it to 0.9 REM as well. So it's just a little bit smaller. The next thing to work on is this profile section. So first I have this profile image that I want to be a circle and then I have the person's name and the number of followers that they have. And again, referencing the HTML, I have a div class of card profile and this profile class contains the image and then the text about the person. So I really have two different containers, one of the image and one of the information about the person. So I'm going to take advantage of that in my code. So I'm going to reference that card profile and set it to a display of flex. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is so the actual image and the text about the person can be side by side. That's why I set it to a display of flex. I'm going to set the margin top to two REM. So there's a bit of space between the description and the profile information. And then I'm also going to align the items in the center, which right now we can't really see the effect because the text is next to the image, but I have overflow hidden. So that's why we're not actually seeing the person's name or the number of followers that they have. 
So next I'm going to work on this profile image. Obviously by default they're pretty large, so I want to reduce the size and turn them into a circle. So beneath this I'm going to reference the profile image. And for these profile images I'm going to set it to a particular height and width. So I'm going to make both of those values 60. Which causes a little bit of distortion. So to fix that, I'm going to write object fit and then cover, which will then retain the aspect ratio for the images. And then I'm also going to set the border radius to 50%, which will make it into a circle. So now these profile images are looking really good. Next, I'm going to work on this section of profile info. Obviously, these two elements are placed side by side without any margin or padding between them. So back in the design, I have a little bit of space between this information and this information, so I'm going to want to add that gap. And I also have a little bit of different styling for these text elements. So going back into the CSS, I'm going to reference the card profile info, which again is the container that holds these pieces of information. And I'm just going to add a margin left. So now there's a bit of breathing room. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the profile name and the number of followers. So for the profile name, I'm going to set the font size to 1rem to make it a little bit smaller. And for the follower count, I'm going to modify the color and the font size. So this is looking really good so far. I have the three different blog articles on the website and they all look really good. Now I'm just going to improve the layout and add hover effects. So going back in my HTML, I have this div class of wrapper that holds all of the cards on the page. So now I'm going to want to apply certain styling to that. So I'm going to identify this wrapper and I'm going to set the display of this to flex, which initially looks like I'm breaking everything, but I'm going to fix it by identifying the flex wrap and setting it to wrap which will then allow the cards to flow freely on the page. And then I'm going to set the justify content to center so that way all the cards are in the center of the page. So now as the screen size increases, if there's enough room, another card becomes visible. Now the last thing I'm going to do is add some hover effects to this so that way the cards look like they're interactive. Now, just for this demonstration, the cards are not actually going to bring a user to a page since this is all just made up content that I created. But if I were to implement this on a website, I would actually add a different hover effect so that way the user knows that they can actually interact with it. So I'm going to go to this card element and add some effects to it. So I'm going to add a hover state for the card. I'm going to add a transform of the scale property and it will be a small amount because I want this to be rather subtle. And I also want to modify the box shadow as well. So now when I hover over it, the scale of it changes, but it happens really rapidly without any kind of animation or transition. So back up to the card element, I'm going to add a transition. And then I also want this to appear interactive. So I'm going to add a cursor to pointer. So that way when the user is over it, the cursor changes as well. And now we have a hover state. So there we go. That's how I created these blog article cards using HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.